we are in for a special mm -hmm. treat this weekend with a solar eclipse that you may be able to see from right here in Houston. Here to talk about how to safely view this eclipse and what else is coming up in NASA is expert Trevor Knuth from the Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland. Welcome to Houston's Morning Show. Mr. Goddard, thank you're here. Thanks for being here. All right, thank you for having me. Okay, so can you tell us what we will see this weekend? What is this ring of fire, so to speak? Yeah, so tomorrow we'll be getting a solar eclipse, which is whenever the moon comes in between the Earth and the sun, casting a shadow onto the Earth. Tomorrow's will be what's called an annular solar eclipse. This is when the moon, a little bit further away in that elliptical orbit, appears smaller, so it doesn't completely block the sun. And creates this ring of fire effect. We can still see the surface of the sun surrounding the moon. All right, so ring of fire. How can people see this safely because we're not supposed to look directly at it, right? Right, so unlike a total solar eclipse where the surface sun does eventually become completely blocked, at no point is an annual solar eclipse safe to view directly. Instead, you should be using eclipse glasses or using an indirect viewing method such as a pinhole camera or viewing the image of the sun that is cast through, say, the uh, leaves of a tree and creating a shadow on the ground. Okay, now, so we're outside of the path. What will you see with the partial eclipse? And so with a partial eclipse, if you use your eclipse glasses, you'll be able to see sort of, uh, you know, the moon come partially into front of the sun, blocking a part of it um, before it actually continues on its orbit and comes away. So you won't be getting sort of that ring of fire effect, but we'll be able to see sort of this uh, interesting effect, which is, you know, the moon partially blocking that sun. Okay, all right, so we'll get some then. And so tomorrow's eclipse is, is actually the first of two solar eclipses that people in North America are in the perfect location to view in the upcoming year. But can you tell us about the big eclipse happening in April of next year, how that's going to be different from what we're, we'll be looking at tomorrow? All right, so on April 8th of 2024, we'll be getting a total solar eclipse, which will be coming, from in, uh, coming into Texas and going up through the northeast United States. A total solar eclipse is when the moon is a little bit closer, and so when it comes in front of the sun, it will completely block the surface of the sun. And when that occurs, you'll be able to see the corona, which is that sparse, wispy, hot atmosphere that surrounds the sun that is usually too dim to see directly. All right, now, so tell us about this. Are there any ways viewers at home can get involved with the annular eclipse? Yeah, and so if you want to, uh, you know, see the sun, uh, because you can't, if you want to see this eclipse, even you know you're not, you know, in the path of totality or because of weather, you want to get involved in say citizen science projects, you can find all this information and more online at go.nasa.gov slash eclipse. All right, Trevor, since you are the expert, we want to know how and where will you be watching? So for the annular solar eclipse, unfortunately, I'll be in Maryland and it's calling for rain, so I'll be watching it uh, online. But then for the total solar eclipse, I'm going to be risking it in upper state New York. So hopefully they don't have cloud cover, but, you know, as an astronomer, it's always a risk. And mm. then what will you wear on your eyes? How will you do it safely? And so I'll be using eclipse glasses. Um, eclipse glasses, you can find them usually at a public library or a local museum. Uh, go through repeatable vendors. Make sure you do have eclipse glasses that are safe to use and are properly blocking out the sun's light. You don't want to use anything that might actually hurt your eyes. All right. Thank you, Trevor Knuth, for all the tips from the Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland. Appreciate you popping in to help us out. Thank you for having me.